Hi guys, it's Jack here at AG Pierce. Um, just a quick update on carrot crops. Um, I'm gonna try and keep it really swift. I know I always say that, but, and then drag on for 15 minutes. What I thought I'd do is just give everybody a bit, a bit of an overview of where things are in the field at the moment. We're at an interesting point of the season where we've obviously got old crop. Um, so crop that was drilled last year, this time last year, um, that we're still harvesting um, up in Scotland. And then we're also now very busy getting the crop ready for the new season. Um, the earliest crops that are starting in about a month's time. Currently in a field of main crop um, open ground carrots um, just outside Kings Lynn. Um, the sea is just over that way. Um, it's a lovely sunny day as you can see um, and things have finally um, warmed up and dried up. As you can see behind me, these beds are prepared. Um, what I thought I'd just quickly do is give a bit of an overview of what's involved in getting the new season crop ready to go, um, getting it into the ground, getting the fields prepared, how do we do it, and then what does growth look like for a carrot um, and what factors affect it. Um, because I know given the current situation, everybody is asking questions around when's the new season starting, what's next year's crop going to be like, because we've already had two really very really difficult seasons back to back. Um, so I'll try and give a bit of an outlook on where we perceive next year to look, but we have to remember that the crop is very much in its early stages, so there's going to be so many effect factors that affect that. As we all know, pretty much since October it's not stopped raining, which has caused massive challenges around uh, harvesting crops, and I did a previous video last year um, of what conditions were like when it was raining and when it's really wet. Um, and at that point, interestingly, like I was just doing it more from an acute perspective and not so much of a long-term perspective. And I think now looking back, um, I don't think anybody perceived how wet it would continue to be all the way through this winter. Um, it's been a winter of records um, pretty much every month, every week. It's one of the wettest on record or the wettest. You know, we've just had the wettest February on record for most parts of the UK and it's caused massive damage to crops, particularly up in Scotland where we've lost crop earlier in the season to flooding and then subsequently um, the continued wet weather and poor conditions has led to a lot of breakdown and crop loss um, over the month. So, you know, it's pretty much for everybody in the UK bringing quite a quick end to the UK season, um, which we're bringing in imports for. I think what I want to try and do now is try and be a bit positive and talk about where new season is. The earliest crops um, were drilled back in sort of January time and put under poly and I've done videos previously on poly so if you have a look on um, our YouTube channel there's ones that I've done from previous years about what, what I mean by when I talk about poly carrots. Um, I'm not going to go into that now but those crops were drilled, put under poly um, and they're actually in quite good state. I was in Suffolk in sort of mid-April um, and I'll flick that on the screen now. Um, crops there were looking really good. We were taking the poly off, um, so taking the polythene off because once the crop gets to a certain point, um, the, the polythene actually goes against the growth of the crop um, and you want to get um, the poly off. The earliest crops are looking good, healthy, and fingers crossed you know, for a fairly normal start date. Um, the challenge is going to be the follow-on crops, so like the fields we've got behind us um, that weren't due to have poly on them, but also, you know, we might be taking in August, September time. These were drilled later than we'd normally want to. Um, it normally takes between 90 and 120 days for a carrot to mature to full maturity, um, depending on the production method and variety and etc. etc. So, you know, if you drill late, there is a certain period of time, however good the conditions are, um, the carrot needs for growth. Um, so there is a potential for the crop to be delayed later on. So even if the first crops uh, come quite early or in good order, the follow-on crops, there is a potential risk of them being lower in yield or just not being quite there. So we do have to manage that. Here today, we've got fantastic growing conditions and let's just hope that this sort of type of conditions continue. There's plenty of moisture in the ground um, and if we continue to get spades of rainfall as well to aid the crop, um, you know, fingers crossed things will get thumping on quite quickly. Um, what goes into growing a crop of carrots? Um, 
So we start the process off essentially with a bare field and we go in with a cultivator. Um, the cultivator basically breaks the soil up um, deep into the ground to allow us to then move through the field and create the beds. So in this field you'll see um, the carrots are arranged into neat beds which the carrots are then the seed is then drilled into and the carrots grow into and that allows us to get in and out of the crops without damaging them um, as well as harvesting them um, through the processes we do. The beds themselves what we want to try and do once we've uh, cultivated is we go in and we ridge and we de-stone and we bed form. So that's a number of different processes where you've got different machines running up and down the field um, for a number of days basically preparing the soil and what you want to try and do is create like a really light fluffy um, medium to basically put those seeds into we use precision drills um, which control the amount of seed that we're drilling in any particular area um, so when we use the phrase seed density that basically means the amount of seeds that we're putting into um, the space in the bed so the more seeds we put in the higher the population of carrots that's good in theory but then potentially if you've got overpopulations um, the carrots won't grow quite as big um, and they start to compete against each other so it's always a fine balance of trying to get the right population to what you want to do and as we're growing 100 percent for processing um, we'll always grow on a slightly lower seed density with a lower population because we want a higher percentage of larger carrots um, because we're, we're processing them. We, there are variances to that for certain cuts and products that we do that we might grow on a higher population, but the majority of what we grow is on a lower density. Um, once the beds are formed and we've got that lovely growing medium, the drill will go through, it'll put the seeds in the ground and on an open ground, um, system like we've got in this field we don't then do a lot so we go through and apply herbicides pesticides as this crop's growing to essentially reduce um, pests that may do cause infections like yellow aphid virus etc etc but also herbicides um, to reduce the amount of weed um, especially in early crops weed is um, a massive issue um, things like mayweed come into your crop compete against the carrots um, cause lower yield um, and essentially stress for the root um, and potentially affect quality as well so herbicides are really important to get the most out of your crop um, that's something that's becoming harder and harder as more herbicides become unavailable um, to us to use once the seed is in the ground it's just a waiting game so a few weeks ago i was in this field and you couldn't see anything um, on the beds you could dig down and you could find the odd tiny seed that had germinated um, but i'll flip down now um, and you can see that we've got some very very small little carrots poking out the ground and at this stage you wouldn't even know it's a carrot um, but you can start to get a sense of where the crop starts um, which is which is the part I really enjoy because I a lot of the time I basically associate carrots with uh, it's just a commodity it's a thing that goes to our factory and I always find it I have to remind myself what we do in terms of the field level um, in terms of taking it from this tiny tiny little plant to thousands and thousands of tons of product that we then drop up and sell to our customers um, which I always think is pretty cool so from now it's just a case of making sure that the carrots get enough sunlight which on today is fantastic they're nice and warm um, to allow for growth um, and then also we get enough moisture um, irrigation in this area we've got really good access to irrigation on all our fields um, and good storage so you know stores are the storage is definitely full um, what we could do is just continued showers and rainfall um, so that we're not having to irrigate um, that would be ideal but that we never get everything we want especially in uh, the world of growing so it's a case of just giving them those carrots and those plants the um, conditions and the food and nutrients they need to get them growing um, and it's just a waiting game now um, so hopefully in a couple of weeks I'll come back and give you a bit of an update on this field so that we can start to get a sense of like how quickly things grow and uh, 
the growing process and we can fo follow this field hopefully all the way through to harvest this year um, which is something I've never done before um, we tend to jump around so hopefully this year I'll get myself organized getting early and give you a, a full um, life cycle of a carrot uh, yeah any questions as always please get in touch um, people have got plenty of questions at the moment so uh, please don't hesitate to get in touch and uh, yeah have a good day. Thanks.